Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study out of the Bug Institute that has spanned several years has found a compound that can reduce the rate of bone loss. And as you know, bone loss can lead to frailty and to conditions such as osteoporosis and sarcopenia. And these are conditions that as we get older, we really need to stay away from. Well, that's enough waffling from me. Let's jump into the presentation and see what this new study out of the Buck Institute has got to offer. This is a review of an article I read in the Medical Express magazine, which discusses a newly discovered compound that extends lifespan in worms and slows down bone loss in aging mice. The study is currently online in the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research Plus, and there are links in the description below to the articles I used to put this presentation together. The project, which involved five separate labs at the Buck Institute for Research on Aging, took several years to complete. The study involved successively profiling over 700 mice as they aged, whilst also testing various therapeutics, which either extended lifespan in simple model organisms or reduced neurological disease in mice. The project data now provides a treasure trove for researchers aiming to develop therapeutics to slow aging and age-related diseases in mammals in the future. Researchers establish rates of change in clinically significant parameters, including blood glucose, body composition, activity, metabolic measures, and detailed parameters of skeletal aging in bone. Senior author of the paper, Professor Simon Melov, PhD, said, This is a unique resource that comes from a study of multiple phenotypes of aging that have never been looked at before. Our hope is that our data will enable those working on preclinical studies to essentially model experiments virtually in order to provide a starting point for testing other interventions in mice. Enzoxazole, the compound that slowed bone aging by up to 31% over the course of a year's treatment in mice, was first identified as one of the five compounds that extended worm lifespan in the Lithgow lab in a study that appeared in the Journal of Nature in 2011. In the Nature article, benzoxazole appeared to suppress age-related protein aggregation. The mechanism of action in mouse bone is still under study, although researchers say the compound appears to slow down the reabsorption of osteoclasts. Osteoclasts are bone cells that are active during the growth and the healing process. Without these cells, age-related conditions such as osteoarthritis can develop. Professor Gordon Lithgow PhD and Vice President at Buck said, if you have a therapeutic that extends lifespan in a simple animal that has no bone whatsoever, you certainly wouldn't predict it would slow down the rate of bone aging in a mammal. It's obvious that the age-related pathways have been conserved during evolution. This new finding is a great example of the utility of screening compounds in simple animals as the starting point to look for unexpected surprising benefits in mammals. Professor Simon Melov added, the metrics we used are all directly applicable to aging in humans. They literally have direct clinical correlates to the type of things you would measure in humans. So what is the human correlation? Well, Professor Melov says that the first time researchers witnessed spontaneous fractures in aging mice femurs, they occurred in 2.5% of the mouse population. This figure is not dissimilar to the 1 to 2.7% incidence of hip fractures in people over the age of 65. Many people who fall and sustain fractures over the age of 60 rarely have a positive outcome. He also noted that they developed a new unbiased method for evaluating kyphosis, an age-related curvature of the spine, and this may pave the way for testing new interventions. Professor Melov said, 
We think using this new database could save substantial resources for those wanting to do preclinical studies of interventions. If someone wants to test a compound against a particular agent phenotype, this database could provide information about how many mice are needed for the experiments and how long it would likely take to see results. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. It certainly seems like an interesting compound with a lot of potential. Uh, and the database looks like an extremely useful resource that could be used to reduce study times because of the information that they've already gathered. Uh, also, an outstanding development if this treatment could be used as an intervention to help people over the age of 65 stop falling and also damaging hips and femurs. Um, the numbers I'm going to read you now from a 2010 study, link in the description below, are quite sobering. In a, re in a recent meta-analysis, um, women sustaining a hip fracture had a five-time increase and men an eight-fold increase in the relative likelihood of dying within the first three months following a fall. And that's compared to age and sex-related controls who didn't have a fall. And that's quite a, that's quite a sobering figure to, to look at. Uh, it harps back to what David Sinclair says about the longevity and aging community that say hold on to the handrail and what it means by that analogy is if you're holding on to a handrail there's less likelihood of you falling and if you don't fall you can't break a leg you can't break a hip uh, and if you look at the numbers of people that do die in the first three months having sustained a fall you can see that holding on to the handrail or doing something to stop yourself falling is obviously very advantageous one of the reasons that people do tend to fall as they reach older age is because of sarcopenia, age-related muscle loss. The good thing is, if age-related muscle loss causes people to fall, there is something we can do about that. And I've done a number of videos about sarcopenia, and I'll link one up here, but I urge you to go and look at, I think I've done about three or four now, they're in a, they're in a playlist that I've got on my channel. Things that you can do to reduce the effects of sarcopenia, or if you are starting to show signs of sarcopenia, what you can do to reverse it. Very interesting and useful if you think you do suffer from age-related muscle loss. Um, well, that's it for today. I hope you found this video interesting. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.